Broad targeting is absolutely the route to go with your advertising, but forget how to actually use Facebook to do the targeting for your audience and you'll completely Ooh. miss the mark. That's why a lot of people come to us and say that broad targeting does not work and that they had better results boosting posts, but it's because they have been doing it wrong. Maybe that's you. Now, just to clarify from all this, the, the strategy is broad targeting, but we're gonna get into the details of why broad targeting is good and how you can actually do it correctly so we can fix that problem. If that's you, you are in the right spot. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how targeting has changed, how to run ads with broad targeting or open targeting to reach a very niche market, and the strategy you need to implement to make your ads actually work. Most people do not make ads profitable. I will tell you right now. So if you're one of those people, don't worry, we're gonna fix that in this video. And yes, I will show you how to do this step by step. Cue that music. Step by step. In 2014, when I was first getting started with Facebook ads, we got access to a third party tool, but we would tell this third party tool, like I would actually have phone conversations with these people that we were looking for people who were likely to buy in the next 30 days, likely to use a coupon and supported local businesses. Like I would have a conversation with people at this data center and they would then populate a large audience of these people who I just gave the description of into our ads account and then we could target them. That's crazy. So a lot has changed since those days with even less access to data and even more regulations Thank you, Europe and everybody else who's taking away access for people who want to run ads. Now, as a side note, I do want to say like, I, I like to get ads and I like giving my data for the ads only because if you're gonna serve me an ad, at least show me a cool ad. I'm a dog person, stop giving me cat food, you know, options to buy cat food. I don't want that. I wanna show me at least the dog. So more personalized ad, better experience. But we no longer need that type of data, right? We do not need the type of data like what we did when I was start, first starting. I think we are in a time now where Meta is leaps and bounds ahead of many other platforms when it comes to data accumulation. And because of that, we're able to find our audiences easier and better than ever. And you may be saying, how the heck is that possible? Well, 10 years ago, 10 plus years ago, we had to rely on third-party data. Now Meta has all the data itself and it's, it owns it. Whether you love it or hate it, doesn't matter. I'm here to help you grow your business. Love Meta, hate Zucks, I, I don't know. But my point is, let's use this to make some money. Now let me answer the number one question I get asked about targeting all the time. Are you sure I should go broad? Shouldn't I just target interest audiences and then lookalikes of those? No, let me explain why this is no longer best practice. So to make those audiences work, before, let's just say, you had uh, an interest, okay, you have an interest audience and it's like a small group of people that you're going after. But let's just say this is Nike. Nike's the interest that we're going after. And you don't know if this person actually likes Nike or hates Nike. You also don't know whether or not they've had a good experience or bad experience with Nike. All you know is that they're talking about Nike. So we're running an ad in, into a group of people who may have a bad experience with that brand. So if they have a bad experience, we're doing some interest targeting. Then you also have bidding meaning other people are running ads against yours. And if you have hundreds of thousands of people, that's a low end, millions of people using the same interest, it's a very small window. So then you have high CPMs, which means basically how high is the cost per 1,000 impressions? Well, it's gonna be higher because you're competing with somebody. And because it's higher, it's gonna cost you more money to go after an interest group that may not even be your best audience. And then you may say, okay, lookalike, that makes sense. A lookalike audience takes like say past purchasers and creates a version of them, of your past purchasers that you could use again for your targeting to run ads against. Well, cool, that sounds good. However, to make that work, you have to have thousands and tens of thousands of data points to even make that make sense. And then we're gonna constrain Facebook by saying, Facebook, Meta, you have all this data, but only focus on this very small circle right here of a group of people maybe a million, two million people who you could potentially target that could be my customer. And it's like, well, that could work, but probably not. Because what we do know about data machines, and Meta is a data machine, an algorithm uh, that it has been created, is that if you're data mining, you need more information. It's why ChatGPT wants everybody to use it, and OpenAI wants you to use it because they need all of those inputs. Essentially, the AI dies until we get to some kind of level of generative AI and it's a whole nother conversation where it can't learn on its own, right? It needs the input. It becomes dumber if it doesn't have that data. Would it be smarter, let me ask you this, 
All of those seem logical. Interest targeting seems logical until you explain why. Lookalike seems logical. But why does broad actually make sense? Broad is going to give Facebook the most amount of data. And we're going to talk specifically about how you can train Meta, Facebook. I'm going to use those interchangeably. Same company. Facebook and Instagram ads really. How you can actually train the platform to go after your audience while giving it as much data as possible. Because I'll tell you right now, we do not know better than the platform. It has so much more data than what we even have an idea of. Is it smarter or dumber to give a platform that needs data to learn more data, right? I don't, I don't wanna go rhetorical question here, but like really, it, it's much better for us to do this. No matter how niche your market, Meta can find your audience. You could be selling t-shirts to cowboys, literal cowboys who live in the, on the ranch in New Mexico, assuming they got a smartphone, right? You gotta assume that part. Or diehard Chiefs fans who live in Sacramento. Doesn't matter, Meta will find your audience and as long as you set up your ads with these pieces of the puzzle correctly, you'll win. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that, but first, I just wanna say hey quick, Hey, howdy and hello. I'm Aaron, I'm one of the co-founders here at Bitbranding and we specialize in helping clothing brands online. My business partner Christian and I and our whole team, so this is Christian, have helped over 250 clothing brands in the last year alone. And I would really appreciate it if you gave us a nice little like and subscribe. We drop new content for you that is clothing brand specific every single week. On this channel, you'll see a bunch of stuff where marketing and messaging and advertising, and my business partner, Christian, he will cover everything to do with your website and AI and apps and themes. So anything that you can think of creatively for a clothing brand, we got you covered here. So make sure you subscribe, please don't miss out. Hey, and if you do this in the next three seconds, I will share with you my favorite sport to compete in. Also, shout out to the Dallas running community. 30% of what makes an ad work is the setup inside of Ads Manager, and it's why Meta continues to try to dumb down the options inside of the platform because a lot of people keep messing that 30% up. But before we used Ads Manager, right, we used to use what's called Power Editor and Ads Manager, and Ads Manager was actually like the dumber version. I think just marketing-wise, it went forward. It went forward instead of Power Editor. But really, only the real OGs remember that. Anybody here from the uh, Power Editor days? Shout out. Drop a comment. I want to. I want to say hello to you. Now, I'm going to share with you guys how to make targeting work for you and build everything in real time. I think this is an extremely important part. But first, hold up just one second. I want to say that, hey guys, if you are a clothing brand owner and want to jump into the specifics of your brand and how to grow up profitably online, you can schedule a free 45 minute strategy session with us. There are limited spots, honestly. So go find a time that works best for you. Check out the link in the description down below. All right, so before we get actually into Ads Manager, I wanna talk through the main areas that you gotta be thinking about when you're creating content for ads and how to actually do the targeting. So top of the funnel content, broad appeal, niche messaging. So when you're creating ads, you're gonna go broad and we're gonna get into this. So age, gender, location, etc. And I'm gonna share a screen on that here in a second. But top of the funnel, we're gonna create a broad appeal and we'll get some examples here, but broad appeal, niche messaging. So how can you create content that, let's say for example, we're going after fishermen. So we're going after fishermen and it's a broader appeal would be, okay, catching a very large bass. So Franklin may not be in the fishing niche, but he can be interested in somebody catching a huge fish. So then your niche messaging could be something about how you use a specific lure or how you use a specific technique within that messaging. So that's top of the funnel, getting as broad as you possibly can while still staying niche, okay? So broad appeal, right, top of the funnel, niche messaging going after only people who are on the inside. It's like you could love basketball, very broad appeal, but you still wanna go after your niche audience from going after that Jordan group, and then you speak only niche of like, oh yeah, the 86 Bulls, right? So then you talk into the niche messaging of that audience. So top of the funnel, okay? You do this with your content. All the targeting is done through the content. Your middle of the mother funnel, because everybody believes that TUF, MOF, BOF, top of the funnel, middle funnel, bottom funnel doesn't actually matter anymore. It does, but when broad targeting, it seems like you don't. You just create content and, and then it just finds the audience, kinda. So middle of the funnel is content. So this is the same thing, but your content should be niche audience, broad messaging. And what I mean by that is, so you have a very specific audience that you're going after. So again, we're going after our people who love Jordan. 
So very niche audience of people who love Michael Jordan and, and love his shoes, whatever. And then the broad messaging could be about the actual shoes. So very niche marketing to the Jordan brand and then broad messaging about the actual shoes. We could be talking about the shoes and go a little bit broader and about shoes as far as being the best basketball shoes. So we go the other direction. Everybody who wears Jordans are better basketball players and our broad messaging could be around that or imagery could be around the broad messaging. Broad appeal for top of the funnel, niche messaging. Middle of the funnel, okay, niche audience. Okay, you're going a little bit deeper with them into that niche audience, talking to them because they're drawn in and then broad messaging within it as well. Okay, so we're gonna try to catch anything that's shaking around in there that may have like fallen loose. And then our bottom of the funnel, can we still see that? Cool. All right, is niche audience, niche messaging. Okay, so a very niche audience, talking about very niche messaging. So Michael Jordan basketball shoes, talking about the Jordan 1s and then very niche messaging, talking about when the Jordan 1s are dropping and then more specifically how people could be wearing them or styling them with other things within that shoe. Jordan 1s only. So you got Jordan, basketball shoes, niche messaging about the basketball shoes. And then with this, you're gonna do some kind of offer or you could do something else, right? Middle of the funnel is kind of warming people up. Bottom of the funnel, you already know they're hot. If you're selling Jordan 1s, great. Now you're talking very specifically about the product and getting people to convert. It's a straight, direct like call to action. It is very much direct sales at this point. And your targeting is gonna be done through your content with inside of Ads Manager. Now let's, let's get into the practicality of how this actually works and jump inside of it inside of Ads Manager. Alrighty, so we are inside of Ads Manager here. As you can see, I got the one campaign set up. I'm gonna build this for you guys, but one campaign set up one multiple ad set, so one campaign or CBO, campaign budget optimization, which means the budget is distributed between the ad sets. And then inside of that, you have multiple ads. We'll get into that here in a second, okay? So let's go ahead and hit create here and then I'll come back to it with the actual content piece as well. So number one, I'm gonna hit sales. Absolutely almost always go for sales, always go for sales. There should only be a campaign per business objective. And so many people like say, okay, I should do a campaign per country. Absolutely, I agree with that. And then pan campaign per objective. The campaign is a CBO, one campaign per objective. So going for sales, um, unless you go outside of the country. And then honestly, you can do a new ad set based off of objective. However, we're testing some stuff right now. This may change where we're doing a campaign per business objective. So we may have a campaign that is top of the funnel only, okay, and ad sets, that are top of the funnel only, and then a campaign that is middle of the funnel and bottom of the funnel. I don't think we're gonna really do that, but I just wanna be transparent with you guys. Maybe we do, we're gonna test that, and if it works, I will, I will let you guys know. But right now, manual sales campaign, I'm gonna go ahead and continue. The campaign name, please label it the actual name that is going on here. So we have it as our top of the funnel DCT. DCT is going away. I'll tell you where to find the updated versions of what you should be doing as well. But right now it's still working and DCT is the, the, really the best way you can still see which creative is actually working. So we can do top of the funnel, DCT, dynamic creative testing. I'll tell you exactly what that means here in a second. All right, not gonna use the catalog here. Advantage Plus campaign budget, I'm gonna turn that on. We spend about $100 a day to start out, $50 a day depending on the brand. I don't really care, it's just as long as we can scale up profitably. Everything else here is gonna stay the same, not too much to do with the ad set. The ad set, this is gonna be again broad, and I really do like to label this as like, okay, is this top of the funnel broad, middle of the funnel broad, or anything, because I'm gonna let the ad set do it. I always do website, not website and shop. Maximum number of conversions, absolutely. Our pixel, I'm gonna make sure to choose our conversion pixel. I'm gonna turn dynamic creative on. You can read here about how it's going away soon. Who knows how quickly soon is? That could be next year, I don't know. Either way, moving to flexible is not that more difficult. It's just a little bit quicker setup. For the example in this video, I'm not gonna show you here because it doesn't necessarily matter as of the time of this recording, but we do have a video and I'll show you where to go watch that here in, in a second it's essentially not changing too much. It'll actually make it a little bit easier. All right, so I'm not changing anything here. Audience suggestions, you can switch to the original audience here. That is an option. So you can choose the actual age range. I'm gonna leave that. 
to make sure that you actually know that keeps it broad. So age, gender, location, I'm going to the United States, 21 to 62, not touching anything else. Then I get to the ad level, and then this is where I would actually set up the ads. It's choosing flexible as the actual format right now. I'm not going to choose flexible. This is in real time. It won't even let me do a single image or video anymore. It's only gonna let me do flexible, it's forcing me. So if I chose the DCT, it's now moving to flexible and they're all gonna switch to that direction. Well, awesome. So you saw here in real, real time, I'm gonna go to this campaign over here. And yeah, I know I could have edited this out, but I'd rather just be transparent with you guys and say, cool, we all learn things as it's happening too. And it's cool that this is actually playing out how it is. So I'm gonna go to my abroad and just so you know too, we do a 30 day exclusions for anybody in the last 30 days of a purchase. Usually that's a great place to be for uh, with clothing brands. Okay, so this is a top of the funnel piece of content. Stand out and cheer in style for our, with our game day collection. So it's a get ready with me. It's very broad and it's talking about moms and then very specifically moms who are going to a game day. So right, so we had a, for example, broad appeal for moms going to game day, niche messaging about the actual jewelry when she gets into it. And this has reached a lot more people. Then here's more of a bottom of the funnel kind of approach. It's not a video, it's just straight up gear up for game day. <laughs> Again, niche audience, niche messaging. It's going after the people who are already like literally looking for stuff for game day, calling out people for game day. It's a very specific messaging on who they're going after. When you're creating content, it could be an image or it could be a video, it doesn't matter. You just need to make sure that when you're creating this, you're creating variations of copy and you're going back to these examples. Now, what I'm gonna do for you guys actually is I will, I will create a foreplay link. If you don't know what foreplay is, I'll pull that up under the screen, but essentially this is what it kind of looks like. It's all the examples of content that has been found for like, I don't know, that, that is working well. So we have examples of all of them. I will pull up a top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel, and I'll create a full board for you guys. If you want access to that, just comment the word foreplay down below and I'll send it over to you and you can look through all the examples of content and honestly, just imitate them. Don't copy exactly, just imitate and use it for your own brand. So essentially, targeting has not changed. Use broad, if that's what you got out of this. That is the setup, that's exactly how I would do it. But make sure, if you want targeting to actually work, you follow an approach like this, because that is what's gonna help you reach your ideal customer. Okay, so now you know how to target your audience with Facebook ads and you're gonna become profitable. I know you are, you can do it. It's time to build a sustainable clothing brand profitably. You've gotta do this. Go watch this video on exactly how to do that right here next. All right, y'all have a great rest of your day. I will see you next time. And P.S., please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Bye now.